Hi everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. In front of me I've got today this 13 inch early 2015 MacBook Air and I'm going to be doing a solid state drive upgrade. So this particular model has a paltry 120 gigabyte solid state drive and in front of me here I've got this Indmem 512 gigabyte solid state drive which is a solid state drive that has been custom built to be used in these models of MacBooks. One of the main issues with this particular computer is that the base models didn't have very good storage in them. 121 gigabytes of storage is, is not enough because we have the uh, the operating system being used and also all your data as well is just it's simply not enough. So this computer is perfectly usable but we really need some kind of storage upgrade for it to be a usable computer. And so this is where these kind of custom built solid state drives have been created. So on the instructions on the back of this box, it says that we need to update the Mac operating system to 10.13. So not only do we have to have 10.13, but we have to go through the actual process of upgrading so that the firmware will be able to recognize the NVMe solid state drive. So this is the update which introduced that particular compatibility. So this, this particular solution is gonna be one of those 12 and 16 pin solid state drives. And um, it's an alternative to the Syntec or the adapter um, NVMe solid state drive method. And it's quite interesting because these have been custom built for these Mac computers and they won't work in any other kind of PC. What I wanna be able to do is to put all of my data from this computer onto this solid state drive. And because I don't have an adapter at the moment, which will allow me to simply clone the data from here to here, I'm gonna go through an intermediary. So what we're gonna do is, we're going to clone the data from this MacBook Air onto this hard drive. And then what we'll do is we'll log into the hard drive and then clone it into the solid state drive, which we'll install into the computer. And therefore we'll have a continuity of data and we won't need a third party adapter to um, attach this to because the 12 and 16 pin adapters are very, very expensive and quite rare to find. So this method is perfectly good workaround, I'd say. So the, the very first thing we need to do is to use something like Carbon Copy Cloner to get the data from here to here. So I'm gonna open Carbon Copy Cloner, which has a free trial. And what I'm gonna do is select the internal Macintosh HD here. And then I'm gonna select the destination here, which is this uh, backup drive here. And I'm gonna turn off safety net so that uh, there's nothing kept on this drive. And we'll run a full clone of this computer to there. So we're gonna be copying the source which is the Macintosh internal hard drive. We're going to be cloning it to the destination drive, which is my USB drive here. I'm going to, just, I'm going to press clone with the safety net off so that nothing is retained here. I'm going to press clone now. So this is just going to take a little bit of time to clone the computer. So this backup is now complete. So I'm just going to go to the Apple logo and then shut down, and then we could do the solid state drive upgrade. So once we've shut down the computer, we just turn down the lid and then turn the laptop over. I'm also going to open up this Indmem drive because I actually think this contains a screwdriver. So we're going to do the unboxing now. Um, so here we can see the instructions which I've gone through already. 512 gigabyte PCIe NVMe solid state drive. And this is the barcode. So it's obviously a Chinese made product. It's not a very well known company. I've seen that this particular company does make other types of solid state drives. So it's not just Mac drives, but all kinds of solid state drives, PC i.e. drives, etc., etc. Okay, good. So we've got this user manual here. And we have the specifications, and this is the compatibility list. So it basically runs from anything that, that supports the 12 to 16 pin solid state drive. So we've got the compatibility with mid 2013 all the way to 2017 MacBook Air. So it's basically that entire era, which is what we're interested in. And these are the model numbers. Okay, so it's showing that we have to update to 10.13. Uh, I think that's because during the update process, the firmware is updated for the PCIe NVMe support. Okay, it tells us how to update properly on the Mac. We need to do a macOS journal installation with GUID partition. So that's what we're going to do when we do the clone. So this is not a specified method that's in this manual, but I know that this is going to work fine. Okay, so various errors. So there are issues with the NVMe drive on 2014 MacBooks, 2013 MacBooks, but luckily we have a 2015, so it should be fine in this model. 
So this is stating an issue with particular models of iMac and we're not, we don't have an iMac. So um, that should be fine. Good, so that's the manual. It's actually very detailed, so it's quite interesting. And it's, it shows that they've done a lot of testing with it and the various issues with it. So that's the user manual. Let's put that to the side. So um, this is the solid state drive itself. So let's have a look at this. So the packaging itself is quite good. This feels very, very light. And it's quite interesting that the the, the weight of it is is very, very light compared to what's, what we're gonna feel inside the the uh, native solid state drive. So uh, we have the two screwdrivers that we need to use to open this particular laptop. So this one looks like the pentalobe screwdriver, so that's for the case. And then this one is the, looks like the Torx screwdriver. Pentalobe screwdriver is kind of a rare beast. It's only really used in these types of MacBooks, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and unscrew all the screws here, so. So once all the screws are out, we're just going to lift out the bottom case to reveal the computer itself. So um, here we just have the standard battery, the logic board, and this is the important part that's the solid state drive. Okay, so the important thing that we need to do first is to remove the battery so that we don't short the laptop for any reason. And uh, that battery removal will mean that there's no power going into the logic board. So when we make any changes, we're not going to do any damage. Next thing I'm going to do is use the included red uh, Torx screwdriver to pull up the solid state drive screw here. So this mounting is just held in by this little tiny screw here. Just going to put that to the side. And now what we can do is just pull up the solid state drive here. So this is the original 120 gigabyte solid state drive. It's not very big, which is why we're replacing this with a drive that's uh, four times larger. And uh, this, you know, in terms of weight, this is actually much lighter, this 512 gigabyte drive. And the original one is much heavier. It's probably because it's using all four of these chips. I'm not actually sure what these do exactly, but I'm not sure whether this one, the chips are laid under the sticker or is that the entirety of the 512 gigabyte solid state drive? Hard to tell. I don't know enough about these things to be able to comment, but I wanna put the original one to the side. I'm gonna install this one, this Indmem solid state drive here. So the 1216 uh, pin fits just like that. And then we're going to reinstall the holder mount torque screw here. So that just goes there. We just screw that in. That's nice and tightly mounted there. So next thing I'm gonna do is to reinsert the battery. And then we're gonna temporarily put the bottom case on. So as you've seen already, I've already cloned my data onto this external drive. So what we wanna achieve is to boot into this actual data so that we can clone onto the internal drive. So what we want to do is to boot into this hard drive clone. So what we need to do is hold down the option key and then press the power button. That's going to put us into the startup menu. So just keep the option key held down while the computer is powering up. And then we can see here that the only option to boot up is this hard drive, which is called backup and I'm gonna press enter here. So there's no internal drive. If there was an internal drive, there would be something saying Macintosh HD there, but there isn't. And we're gonna make that happen by doing the clone. So once we've actually booted into the hard drive, it's probably gonna take a lot longer than normal because we're running through a standard hard drive through the USB. So it's gonna take a lot longer to actually boot up. But uh, once we're in, just log into the user account and we're gonna go through Carbon Copy Cloner once again. So we're gonna start a new task. And what we wanna do is select this external volume as a source. So I'm selecting the backup as a source and the destination is gonna be the Indmem solid state drive. So this 512 gigabyte solid state drive is gonna be the destination. So I'm just gonna set that as the destination. And then what we're gonna do is to press the clone button here and it's going to clone from the external drive into the internal solid state drive and all the data will be preserved. So I'm gonna press clone now and then start this process. It's asking us whether we're going to copy a time machine backup. We don't actually have a time machine backup here, but it's going to make that clone anyway. I just let that run for a little bit of time and then we'll check in once it's done.
So now that this backup is complete, that means that the data is transferred. So we're going to shut down the computer and log back into the internal solid state drive. So we've now logged back in with the internal solid state drive and I've got the information coming up here. So I've got the InMem SSD installed and it's showing 511.77 gigabytes of storage. And in the actual About This Mac storage tab, we can see that we have much more storage now. We have uh, around four times more free space now, and uh, we're not going to run it into any kind of internal storage issues. So this write speed is showing a speed of 1,129 megabytes per second and a read speed of 1,147 megabytes per second. If we compare that to a test I ran on the last solid state drive, you can see that this is substantially faster. So I'll put them side by side now, and you'll see that this particular solid state drive is much, much faster. So this is no real surprise because in 2021, we have solid state drives that run substantially faster than ones that were produced in 2015. And it's kind of surprising how much faster it is. Um, I think Apple Apple's newest solid state drives on the new computers are really fast, even faster than this. It's probably never going to see benefits from really, really good read speeds, but uh, it's interesting nevertheless that this is a relatively cheap option. If you're thinking, oh, well, if I buy a secondhand Apple product and use a solid state drive from there, if I harvest a 512 gigabyte from a, you know, a MacBook Pro, a MacBook Air, then that might be better. Well, actually, the third party drives are substantially faster and substantially cheaper too. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. It is basically the cheapest way to upgrade a large amount of storage on this type of computer. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. If you made use of this tutorial, please leave a comment and I'll see you in the next tech video.